as an artist, he's, he really started at a young age um, experimenting with different mediums. And um, it evolved into him getting some commissions to do artwork for people in Edmonton, Calgary, and the Blood Reserve. A lot of rodeo commissions that he got, um, pretty much in, in Alberta. What, painting? Well, I've sold two of these. I'm surprised because they aren't very good. It doesn't look good. Well, to do something. Very sure. Just to do something. Well, you can't work in here in the hospital because you got pretty roaring fire going when you're doing sculpting, the kind of, the kind of sculpting I do. I'm so much better at it than I am at all the other things that I'm doing. It was a, it was a health issue. Uh, there's several medical concerns, and uh, they felt he would be much more comfortable where he's at and get the proper care. Two years now doing this sort of, what you see here today. It is just dandy for the people that require medication and just generally looked after by nurses and so on. It has everything but what I want. Uh, and, and it's, it's just yeah. too bad that you can't have a roaring fire going. And the, I miss that, really miss it. I'd be happier if I could leave the place and, and do something that I wanted to do rather than than doing what we're doing here now, because I'm wasting away and not getting anything done. And one of the persons we should remember most sincerely is Cornelius Martins. It's Corny Martins. Corny Martin. Corny Martins. Uh... Cornelius Martins. I should say Corny Martins. You'll give me one for if you heard me talk about him like that. Corny Martins has gained international recognition for his work in bronze. He created this life-size statue of Chief Crowfoot, which stands in the Alberta Legislature. He's been commissioned to do work for the Calgary Stampede, the Canadian Rodeo Association. For the University of Lethbridge, for what was then the um, Miners Library, it was called. It was a club, um, and the Lethbridge Community College. He uh, designed a couple of the medals. A medal was given to everyone in what they called the Oko family, people who helped out with the Calgary Olympics in 1988. Those would be what I would say his major pieces. Uh, I was privileged uh, to be Corny's foundry assistant in his later years when uh, the job of pouring the molten bronzes got to be a little too physical. Yeah, I guess I was the model for a couple of the coal miner sculptures he did. You know, take this pick and stand like this kind of thing. It's pretty straightforward, <laughs> nothing too involved. What you see here is pretty well the, the way it, it was when we last poured. Uh, some of his tools are gone. He sold them to another bronze sculptor that was getting into the foundry business. And it's pretty much the way it always was. Uh, that's a very touchy subject for him. Um, uh, because of his religious background, he became a conscientious objector, and um, he spent some time in British Columbia at what they called the SEAL camps. He has talked to me about it, and it was fascinating to hear his stories. Uh, did, did some amazing things working as a blaster building roads in Jasper National Park. Then they shipped them to Vancouver Island and uh, to put out forest fires and that kind of thing. I, there was a couple of things. I, I believe there was a little way they were treated by the Red Cross. He's bitter about that, I believe. Uh, one of the other things is, you know, he, he did the right thing to, to make his parents and the religion happy, yet other fellows his age that went off and fought in the war came back and were greeted as heroes, of course, whereas these guys weren't. So, you know, that, that left a bad taste in his mouth. I think he always felt that he would have liked to have joined up, and but he didn't 
in respect for his parents' wishes. He sometimes feels that he wish he would have stepped forward and done it his way. I don't know, he may be in, be in his late 50s, maybe not even. I'm sure he's in his 50s. When he uh, came to Coaldale as a young adult, he eventually got a job as a cheesemaker. And I can still make cheese if I had to. Then he took a job as a school bus driver for, I, I think, another seven years. Not enough challenge in it to interest me too much. Then he was able to get a job at a local television station here in Lethbridge. I worked in the art department quite a bit, more than anything else. And I enjoyed it very much indeed. And um, while he was working there, uh, a lady came in who was an artist who sculpted in clay. And uh, so Corny got an idea of, well, maybe I could sculpt in clay too. It isn't a job. It's a different thing altogether. Well, there's no comparison. I, I like this better than anything. I'm sorry I don't remember when he first started uh, growing the mustache. It was certainly after we were married. I love it. <laughs> it's better than Lanny McDonald's. And uh, at times our two children, when they were still home, would say to him, it's out of control, Dad, it's time to trim it, and he would. And so it's been in different stages of size. <laughs> oh, I think Corny has always been a bit of a character, and I think that's one way of him expressing his character because I didn't shave this morning. <laughs> no, I'm sorry. I shouldn't have said that. And what Mark Twain was to literature, this man is to the art of bronze sculptures. How do you enjoy working with bronze? Oh, bronze is one of the very finest of metals to work with. It's not easy to work with, but it isn't that difficult to work with. It's fairly soft. Uh, you can clean it off completely. You can work with it. It'll, it's almost everlasting. It lasts a long time. It lasts longer than you or I or any of the other gentlemen here. And you could go and bury this in the ground for the next 50 years, and somebody could dig it up, and it, all that would happen to it is, depending on what the content of what, what the soil is like, it could be either green or black or brown. And just generally, it just takes a nice coloration, or patina as we call it, just a beautiful metal. Uh, he had a colostomy surgery in, in 1996, and that was just before, just a few months before his honorary degree. Well, it was a very medical thing, and it all went through his doctor, of course. He just uh, didn't feel well, and uh, we visited the doctor, and they recommended that he go up to Calgary and have this colostomy surgery. And I think he was being as calm as he could so that that I wouldn't get too upset about things. Many people, you know, get nervous, right? When they, when oh, they, well, when they yeah, have that's, that's very many people, yeah, including myself. Right here. Must be a vehicle accident that the ambulance was going to. I would say that the people that were there, very few of them knew about it. The people that nominated him certainly did, and they were concerned, and they checked with him several times. They would come out to our home to make sure that he felt comfortable with, with going up on the stage and receiving it. I invite Cornelius Martins to rise. The University of Lethbridge is honored on this occasion to recognize the artist by conferring upon him the honorary degree of Doctor of Laws, Honoris Causa. I present Dr. Cornelius Martins. when he came up on the stage and our, our whole family happened to be there. And yeah, it was very emotional for me. But he was very calm and cool about it all. And, and uh, I think he enjoyed it, but he doesn't show much emotion in that way. You know, he's from an age where, where you didn't express emotions that much as a, as a male. And, but I know he's proud of it, but he doesn't talk of it or he would never, ever brag of it. 
<laughs> I, I don't know. They just gave it to me, I think. Um, at first, uh, Corny ta talked to his doctor and said, well, I guess that's the end of my career. And his doctor told him, no way. He had people that had had that surgery and were farming 45 years later. And so Corny brightened up considerably. Uh, I think I became a nagger and just to keep him from going out into the shop immediately he got home and starting up. Was that a very happy time in your life? Well, of course it was. Another lease on life. Get this one in bronze. I don't know, I did all kinds of antelope. I did a life size one for the university. They rubbed the nose and the tail. And it's kind of half shiny, I think. I haven't seen it for a couple of years. But. Oh, I'm, I'm very pleased that they do that. <laughs> well, we were at some kind of a do, and uh, the lady, I didn't know who she was or anything, she came up to me and asked if I could do an Elvis. I said, sure. And that's, that was it, just the one. That's all I've done of that one. Does it look like Elvis? We've always called it Thanksgiving. It just seems to suit. I don't know if that will ever go on a plaque and call it that. I, I hope that it will, because it depicts a man sitting in front of his horse and uh, with his hat off, and we felt he was giving thanks for the year that he'd had. To have it in such a prominent place, you know, beside Lethbridge City Hall was quite an honor for him. And uh, it was a big show. The, the sculpture was a little late coming from the foundry, and in Cochrane, but it made it in. The one in the hall is much better than the enlarged size, you know. It wasn't good. I wasn't too terribly happy about that. Almost like my playing the fiddle, you know. Say, uh, when I get a horse that is finished, it really isn't quite finished, my, in my opinion. It should, a person should probably have another, what, another year's work on it? No, that isn't fair. I, I think like any true artist, he, no, he's not. You always see something you could do better. Uh, others may not see it. It's only there in, in your mind and your eye, but you always strive to do better than you have on the last piece. Quite a number of years too, when I think of it. Um, I'd say 500 anyway. Probably more. <laughs> there, there's a of a horse? Uh, that's a good question. Uh, talented, self-taught artist. Uh, I, I don't know what they'll say. That's a good question.
Really good question. He's a wonderful husband and father and grandfather, and uh, uh, I feel that he'll remain a well-known artist in Southern Alberta. I just got one last question. You were just saying that maybe that was the last time that this thing gets fired up. How, how does that make you feel? Uh, kind of bittersweet. You bet. End of an era for sure. Chokes me up a bit. I'll tell you what'll happen. You grab them and throw them into a truck and take them to to a nuisance ground. They aren't worth a nickel. We have to destroy them because we wouldn't want them to get into someone's hands that would repeat them, that wouldn't be fair to the people that have bought previous pieces of work. Well, my favorite is every single one of these. <laughs> I can't give you a single favorite. I, I've done better work on some than I have on others. It's just maybe the wind was blowing, I don't know. This is one of the favorite ones right there. About as good as any. Well, that's all about that one. Oh. I lived on a farm north of Coaldale with my parents and a skunk got underneath our house. And my dad just tried every possible way to get rid of it and Corny and his brother heard about it. We didn't know Corny at the time or his brother, but they came out one day and offered to get the skunk out from under our house, which they did. And I met him at the door when they came all oh, very handsome and, and <laughs> charming. <laughs> uh, uh, you know, take, take hold of doing things and, and uh, yeah, a take charge person. One more. One more. <laughs> 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 One more.